right now. Um, but go or onto the Um, but if, if you go on to Bitbucket, um, and this isn't the one I'm looking for, it's one of Mohammed's. But if you go to your own repo, um, there will be a sync over here. Make sure you sync, and then after you sync, then you can go back to Git Bash or Terminal and do a Git pull. And then clustering, I believe, uh, is the one that should be in there. So what was the last one? Clustering script updated, so yeah, so there's some commits in there um, that Mohammed put in there of the clustering script in there. Um, I also um, put up class two and class three on the drive if you're really having trouble with um, using Bitbucket. So the worst case, and you want to look at those, they're on the drive, but it would be great to learn how to do Git Bash or, or Bitbucket or repository stuff because um, it really does change the way that you interact with code. Um, now, Ohana is going to do clustering today, and then tomorrow we'll do our packages and maybe some hyperspec. Great. A little introduction to hyperspec. A few yeah. minutes. Yeah, probably like 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. hyperspec. So, today we'll get some basic introduction into clustering. So, what does clustering do? Does it? It takes a set of data and like clusters or like divides this data into some of the subsets based on some of the property of the data sets. So today we'll do some clustering with Iris dataset. So let's look into what Iris dataset looks like. So Iris dataset is already in there, so just I load the packet into and save the Iris data into data frame. So here we have what Irish data set looks like. So it has like five columns. The first column Looks the sepal name. It's a, like a three type, three flower types data. So first one is like flower sepal length, then flower sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And the last column is the species. So that's where we define like what is the flower actually looks like. So here we will try to like classify the flowers based on the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and the petal width into three class of things. So to make this thing interesting, so first we remove the species column from the data frame. So now if we look into the data frame, so there is no species column. So we save this species column into the variable called species and just remove the data. So now we can look into what the species looks like. So it shows like in the summary, you can see there is like three types of species and everyone is like 15. So there are many type of clustering in the statistics. Like one of them is like k-means clustering. It's a very basic clustering but very useful one. Uh, people say like it's an unsupervised clustering. So if you don't know anything about the data or anything like you can try this one, like it can show like how many clusters in there, what should be the optimum number of clusters, and like this. So for k-means clustering, to run the k-means clustering, well, first I want to define a function that calculates like how many clusters should be there in the data. So this function called WSS plot, it actually calculates the like sum of the squares inside the data. So just, so just I source the data in the function, so the function is over here, and from the function you just run the cluster, it shows you the block. So this is a, like a basic plot where you can determine like how many clusters do you need. 
So you can make one cluster of the data, two cluster of the data, three, four, five, six. And for each cluster, how many within sum of squares within the clustering group is decreasing. So this is what we call like elbow point. So in the clustering, we try to find the elbow points. So here you can see like after three within sum of squares, like it's pretty flat. So here we can say like optimal number of clusters is three, or you can call it like four. It's your choice. Since we know there are like three types of species over there, we can say like, okay, three is the cluster. But if we don't know like how many clusters within the data distribution, we always use like this type of elbow graph to find out the optimal number of clusters. <coughs> so now we know we have like three clusters in there. Now we try to run the cluster. So to before running any clustering or any machine learning technique or anything else, uh, there is the important thing to set a seed. So here we, I'm trying to set a seed like one, two, three, four. You can choose a seed like anything. So why do you want to set a seed or seed number? It's very important to set a seed because if you want to do a reproducible re do a reproducible result, setting seed is important. If you don't set seed, it will show different results for different times. So like if I set seed here, one, two, three, four, let's run KMS clustering. So for KMS clustering, uh, the basic command is k-means, then you give the data frame, then you say like I want number of clusters, like three, three clusters, and what is the iteration number, like how many times you could run the clusters. So for our case, like we give the data frame TF, and we say okay, we want number of cluster three and maybe maximum iteration 1000. Since the data set is very small, 1000 iteration doesn't take that much time. So and we save the clustering values in the k-means.fit. So let's see what's inside in the k-means.fit. So if we check the attributes of the k-means.fit, it has like a clusters, cluster center. Uh, this is total sum of squares, and this is within sum of squares. So these are the values that defines the, like how many clusters we need. Like here we can say like this graph also this sum of scores comes from like these values so, and then like we total within sum of squares what is the size of the clusters how many iteration is there and if there is okay so let's see like how many clusters in there and what is what type of cluster is there so we define like three type of cluster so they define it as one, two, three, and it's distributed like this. You can see the clustering size. It says like the type one cluster is like 50, type two is 62, type three is 68. But if you can remember um, what we see, it's summary summary of the species there is like each type of cluster is like 50. So this k-means clustering it defines one cluster perfectly and there is some error in other two clusters. So this is just a start we didn't tune anything it's just like a basic plot it defines the cluster in three ways but there is some error also in there. So you can plot this cluster So, so this is the distribution of the cluster, three cluster. So it defines this cluster like very well. There is some anomalies here, like some of them are red, it defined as a, like a green and green as a red. So the problem is here, but it can define this cluster very well. And Cluster in the center here. Which cluster has a center? Famous cluster totally correctly based on the center. 